and gentlemen, welcome back to episode two of Q&A with uh, Kalor and Akupian. And today we're joined by Angie Kallerman, who is uh, not only an acupuncturist and clinical herbalist, but she's also specializes in uh, Chinese nutritional therapy. Um, I figured it would be better to have uh, another expert here since um, this episode we're going to be, we're going to cover uh, Dr. Akupian's book, Elemental Nutrition, a guide to cooking for your organs, which is available on Amazon. So welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So Dr. Akopian, I'm really interested in the, the, not only the content of your book, but also the process of making it. Um, I mean, from having just the idea, which ultimately led to the final product. And maybe since the prices of, for example, sunflower oil have been going up steadily, maybe you could um, share some information about various alternatives um, or oil in general. Well, um, first of all, thank you for having me back. And uh, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share some of the uh, original concepts that helped me develop the book and spend some time. It took a, a while to actually uh, put the information together to bring that book to fruition. And uh, speaking of the topic of oil in general, you know, classically, the primary cooking oil in many cultures was lard. And uh, we know now that solidified fats are, you know, very high in saturated fat content, which causes all kinds of cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, different types of pathologies, and uh, contributes to, uh, you know, uh, impacting the patient's health. Uh, and then with the advent of understanding of the molecular structures of oil, of the different types of oils, their boiling points, because remember, oils, after they reach a boiling point, up beyond that, the smoking point, if you will, mm -hmm. they change their molecular structure. And that molecular structure can now become toxic. It has much more uh, um, toxic effect on the body. So understanding what type of cooking you're going to do and what type of oils you're going to use for that cooking can really greatly improve your overall uh, um, intake of valuable nutrients uh, uh, from your food. So in the book, what I try to do is focus not just on here, here's your sunflower oil and cor corn oil, et cetera, but I broke down a, a, a much uh, in, in much detail all the different types of oils and how you could probably use them most efficiently with the greatest health benefits. For example, you know, you know olive oil is, is great for light sauteing and salad dressings, you know, things that are not going to increase the, the temperature. Uh, coconut oils and, and sunflower. Why is sunflower oil so popular is because it has a higher boiling temperature higher uh, smoking temperature. So uh, yeah, a lot of times you can hear the um, uh, cooking uh, show experts say, wait until you see the smoke rise before you add the food. Well, they're waiting for that edge point. It's, a, it's an art. As I always say, cooking is not, you know, in order to be a really good chef, you have to be a chemist. To a certain degree, you have to understand chemistry, the uh, uh, thermal dynamics, how food changes, you know, the more you cut food, the more you increase surface area, the more you improve um, surface transition. And oil literally serves as the medium by which you transfer heat from the heat that's rising from the cook oven or the, you know, whatever the medium is into the proper food components in order to induce cooking. So I, I spent quite a bit of time talking about that, and I'm, I'm sure Angie has a, a lot of really good uh, um, uh, uh, practical uh, advice and, and uh, uh, clinical experience in, in that field as well. Yeah, I have a lot of experience in cooking uh, in general, and I do use a different kind of, of oils depending on the purpose, what I'm, what I'm cooking, what the technique I'm using. I do really like um, the part that uh, in your book, you uh, actually uh, differentiate uh, all the oils, really the Chinese medicine style. And I haven't found that uh, anywhere yet. So it was really, uh, I was really curious. How, how did that come about? How did you find the information? Yeah, uh, primarily due to research, due to studies, and also talking to a lot of my old teachers in Tibet and China and Chengdu, uh, working out the chemical constituents and also the bioactive compounds. I think this really brings us to a, a whole new topic 
Um, you know, when we look at TCM nutritional therapy, you know, we have the five elements, the, uh, the elemental nutrition talks about the flavors, the colors, the temperatures, the textures, you know, all these esoteric things about food. And uh, most scientific approach says, mm, that's just hocus pocus. We know we're not going to focus on that. Yeah. But, but when you really break it down into science, and this is why I really wanted to focus this book on is to merge those two thinking. Because when you, for example, look at the TCM theory of saying red color foods are good for the cardiovascular system. Well, it's been now scientifically shown that flavonoids um, that are involved in granting those foods the red color are also very effective in preventing and addressing cardiovascular health. Same thing with uh, uh, different other compounds. You know, they say about uh, tannins. Uh, tannins reduce blood pressure. Well, tannins have very specific effect on the food's taste. So when we talk about bitter tastes and in TCM, uh, being able to work on the liver organ and, and, and assist in calming and soothing the liver, well, tannins offering the same function within the, uh, within the biomedical understanding. And the same thing goes through with alkaloids. You know, we talk about alkaloids being anti-analgesics. Um, we talk about uh, lignans uh, being able to work in the intestinal biome. All of these um, bioactive compounds have now been identified through modern scientific analysis and have been uh, researched for various impact on the body's uh, health. And it's really interesting to see that a 5,000 year old medicine uh, uh, talked about these things without the scientific uh, uh, tools and the knowledge to go through and analyze these molecular structures. That's why I think it's, 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 it's important to try to stress the, the differentiation. There are thousands of books out there about TCM nutrition or about nutrition in general. And I didn't want to just be one of so many. I wanted to take something that was given to me, uh, thankfully, from thousands of years before from masters and, and practitioners of TCM in the heritage, and then combine that with my biomedical knowledge and bring something relevant and specific to the consumer. That really stands out in, in, in the book, because I do have a lot of books uh, on uh, Chinese nutritional therapy. And, um, and, and exactly what I said, this is one thing uh, that stuck, uh, stuck out. And, and I was wondering, how did you find this information? Because I have read so many books about nutrition and about oils, because everyone is asking about oils in general, because mm -hmm. most people, they want, uh, they want to lose weight and they ask, start asking about fats and oils. And then you have that information, that piece of information I only give, can give from my TCM point of view. Uh, and uh, of course, the knowledge of, of, about how to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, so you limit yourself. And now with um, uh, this part, this new information, for me, it's new, but it's very logical also, like what you said, it's like passed down from many generations. And now finally, you can combine it. Yeah, but also I think we needed this book because like Angie said, if you want to explain, if you're a TCM, pure TCM practitioner, um, there are not many books out there who dive into the, the chemical compounds and a scientific Western scientific explanation of how food works. And I mean, even if you're talking to your, your patients and they don't understand all the scientific uh, uh, explanation you're going to be giving, it's more, they're more, they're more used to hearing Western scientific explanations. I mean, you know, if you explain it in simple steps to people, everyone will be able to understand the concept of um, uh, compounds and, and, and biochemicals. Um, it just makes it, I think it's just a, a bridge that makes a TCM nutrition more acceptable to the general public. And that's what was really needed. That's what we're going for anyway, right? So we're trying to promote TCM in this yeah. manner. Yeah. And this is just another tool to make it more understandable, quasi understandable, because they don't understand the science even, but as long as you say it's scientifically proven, then people are more willing to accept it. 
Yeah. Well, you know, there are two types of books when I did when I was doing my uh, uh, literature studies and, you know, literature mm -hmm. reviews of what's available out there in terms of the books. There's the really well developed TCM perspective, classical nutritional books. And then there is very well organized and very well defined uh, biomedical scientific books that are about nutrition in terms of caloric intake, in terms of uh, the um, electrolytes compounds and bio, you know, balancing the homeostasis, et cetera, of the body. But there was nothing that merged the two together and said this equals this and therefore is good for this. And that's why that's why I think the book really is, resonates with those individuals, because those two types of books are for completely different audiences. Right. A TCM practitioner is going to read their book and then try to interpret that into a message for their patient. A scientist is going to read the book or an MD is going to read the book on this side, and he's going to try to implement that into his practice. But somewhere in between, an, an average individual who, 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 who's trying to live a healthy life the, is missing on the link between those two, as you said, uh, uh, the, the, the bridge, if you mm -hmm. will. So hopefully the book serves as that function in bringing the two together. Going from research to actually publishing, how long did it take you? What were the steps? I mean, for the people out there that are interested in yeah. writing books and, and publishing books. It, it started with the concept of, um, I was cooking one day. I, I love cooking just like Angie. You know, when mm -hmm. you're in this, in this business, you love to experiment, you know, chemistry, right? You want to see what happens. And I was cooking and I looked at something and I said, this is such a liver food. And the idea sparked in me, you know, we always talk about nutrition from calories and weight loss and no one really addresses, you know, I want to soothe my liver. I want to calm my heart or I want to uh, stimulate my stomach or digestion. You know, no one really talks about it that way, but we are all just organs inside. And so I thought, you know what, let's, let's shift the book in the idea, or create a, a, a book or a text that talks about, you know, how you feed your organs, how to provide nutrition for your organs. And I thought the best way to go about it is to look what's out there. It took me six years to literally do the uh, uh, reviews, the literature reviews, to try to read as many of the books out there as possible that fit this model, and then uh, start doing the actual food research, start doing the per element, per component, you know, the book contains substantial individual detailed foods and all of their bioactive compounds. You know, I didn't want to focus on one gram of this equals this many calories. You can find that information, a plethora of it on the internet. What I wanted to focus on is what are the traditional medicines use this for? And not just in Chinese, but in many other cultures as well. Because one of the things that I discovered is every region and culture that has a biome of its own, the, uh, of, of nature, uh, develops a, a, a symbiosis with the people living in it. And that symbiosis creates uh, a healthful foods and toxic foods for that group. This is how traditional medicine in different regions and different countries are developed. Because in South Africa, you have certain herbs that are very unique to that area that are used medicinally in, in the Amazon, in the Siberian region, you know, in, in China and in, in uh, um, American uh, uh, Southwest, in the American Indians. You know, all of these cultures created this uh, symbiosis with their surroundings and partook the good value of the nature that provided in terms of healing. So the research that went into that was about six years. And then I had the fortune of actually uh, engaging with uh, a really good chef, uh, a Cordon Bleu chef that loved the dabbling with chemistry. And, and she said, my kitchen is yours, let's do it. And so the food components, the nutritional part is mine, but the, the photos and uh, she loves taking food photography. And, and so we thought, okay, let's merge the two together and come up with something that's, that's really lovely. So I'm thankful to Mari. Uh, she's a, an incredible chef and she's a vibrant woman. You talk about mm -hmm. fire element, classic fire element. 
as I said, it takes about, um, it took me about eight years. So about okay. six in terms of doing the research and putting the notes together. The writing isn't that difficult. Once you have all the raw data and you have an idea of what you want to do, mm. you know, in my belief, you want books to be stories that that engages people and you know that's why i talked a lot about my grandfather in the book you know he was a uh, what's known a hakim uh, in the traditional uh, near east asian cultures uh, you know hakims were the the advisors to the viziers uh, the the physicians of the court if you will mm. and he would always tell me food the best medicine food the best medicine <laughs> you know because you can prescribe an herb or a, or a pill to a patient, but you're limited by how well they're going to conform to taking it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Food, they'll never miss their lunch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. They might, they might miss their pill, but they'll never miss their food. Yeah, that, that's why it's interesting if you're practicing to combine, to give food advice as well. You know, it's like some practitioners focus on uh, not only acupuncture, herbal medicine, but also give uh, Tai Chi, Qigong mm -hmm. advice. But I think uh, when it comes to lifestyle, of course, but then food advice, like you said, you, you need to eat. Yeah. And yeah. if you can instill changes, subtle changes in their nutrition, and you'll create a menu that is not just look good, taste good, but it also functions good in the body. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly the reason why I studied TCM. From our household, I mean, uh, when I grew up, my mom was always cooking um, soups like four or five days a week. We have some sort of herbal soup, herbal soup, and uh, with the herbs that uh, is being used in the Chinese formulas. Uh, when my mom cooked, it was not only about the taste, it was really like, okay. This is what my daughter needs. Mm -hmm. This is what, what the youngest need. This is what my husband needs. This is what I need. And she will combine it. It was never a one pot dish. It's always like a few dishes and a soup. And every, everything in it, it's always well balanced. So that's the, the, the difference that I, um, I encountered when I grew up, uh, moved out of the house, ate with people, friends, and even with Dopi, with his family, it's really, it's like a different culture, different cuisine. So why do they cook like this? So it's really started me going on like, why do they cook like this? So what, what is the reason? What is the culture and, and exactly the region that they grew up in? But not only the region, but where did they come from? Like, um, uh, like in Suriname. People are from everywhere and they landed there. So their roots are somewhere in Asia, somewhere in Africa. So they took all those ingredients and make, made it work. And now it's the, um, the interesting part is why does it work? Why do they eat like this? And even people there don't know um, why it is it's only that they know oh it's brought from africa so that's why we're using it or it's because of the the history being a colony uh, from from the dutch from from the british that is making this dish making the ingredients to into this recipe mm -hmm. and and i think it's really uh, good to have some uh, some interesting books or people telling about those recipes, so traditional recipes, what you already mentioned, like in different uh, countries or, or uh, uh, places, they have their own cuisine using the herbs uh, known to them and works for them there. You know, you talked about something that, that, that really resonates uh, well, Angie, and that is the the adaptation um you know it's not just adaptation to region but there's also adaptation to seasonal and also mm -hmm. the climate and i think one of the best uh, things that that i can cite from the book is the seasonality and tcm the the theories that 
that the, the rich heritage that's behind TCM really focuses on harmony with nature, harmonious living with nature. And, uh, you know, one of the, I'm working on my second book, I'm on one year, year one of my second book, <laughs> and it talks about the Taiji of life, the, the concept of how it's explained from a traditional perspective, from TCM, from the Taoist philosophy approach, if you will. And um, seasonal living and living in harmony with nature is a very key element. And you know, one, one case in point, in, in um, the kidney element food uh, section, I talk a lot about um, uh, eating uh, things that are gonna nurture the, the kidney, especially in the winter. Bone marrow soups, you know, every culture, I don't care where you're from, winter has very special food that is really hearty, really nurturing, and so heavy that you probably end the rest of the day in bed. Yeah, I can probably look at every culture out there and come up with that winter uh, a soup, if you will, or mm -hmm. the winter broth that they consume in, in almost a ritualistic manner that is <laughs> that core engendering knowledge. And that's knowledge is everywhere. It's just not explained clearly. And hopefully the book tries to at least provide some uh, um, understanding or, or relevant understanding of why we consume these foods, as Angie said, and why we cook them in that way. You know, so active ingredients in foods are medicine. They're chemicals that have a direct impact on the physiology of the human body and understanding how they work and the, the mechanism by which they work can help you as an individual or as a practitioner to improve your skills in understanding the food that you're consuming or prescribing to your patients the knowledge, the lack of knowledge, um, biochemical knowledge that uh, uh, some practitioners have, they can top off with this book. It's, it's easy accessible as well. I mean, it's, a, it's an easy read. It's not all science. And um, well, food is medicine. So I mean, we should delve more into that aspect of food. So maybe that's a, um, a, a good way to close this uh, Q&A session. Great. Um, uh, book is available on Amazon for those of you interested in uh, acquiring. Yeah. Or you can contact me directly. So either way. And stay tuned for Elemental Living version, uh, you know, part two of the, uh, of the series. <laughs> is, that, is that the second one you're working on? Elemental yes. Living. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was, thank you, guys. Hmm? Thank you. It's very nice meeting you, Angie. I hope to have an opportunity to do a, a tandem cook. Maybe we yes. can do a cook off one day. Yes, let's do yeah. that. Yeah, It'd I'd love great. I'd love to experiment with food. So it'll yeah. be a fun experiment. Yeah, we should we should um well the thing is because we're in different countries, but otherwise we should figure out a way to do it online, you know, uh, cooking uh, why not? Yeah. yeah, why not? We can have we can have uh, uh, a YouTube cook off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah, 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 uh, sure. Yes. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. That's there the next go. project. That's the next there you project. Go. There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. All right, Thank you guys. You. We'll, we'll see you in the next topic. Uh, episode three, I think, right? Is yeah. coming up next. Correct. Coming up episode Great. three. Okay. Alrighty. See you next Take time. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.